historical growth has no relevance what matters is future growth and future to a large extent is unpredictable future is also cyclical in my 20 years of investing raj all i can tell you is i have seen at bottom valuations companies get at bottom profitability companies get bottom pe multiples and at peak profitability companies get peak pe multiples and that's how you have 100 baggers in the stock markets and that is why you have 95% to 99% erosion in stock prices right which is which is an irony which normally you would think that as profit margins expand as this you would start to think that the pe multiples will decline it doesn't happen that way hello listeners my name is raj singhal and welcome to another episode of breaking investment stereotypes here we deconstruct world class investors or wealth managers and deep dive into their investing journey professionally personally or both this episode is brought to you by multiply.co where we believe that investing is an ignored life skill our mission is to create a platform where people can find fellow investors discover investing products and share investing ideas we have now gone live and thousands of users are already part of a vibrant community so do check out our app which is there both on apple store and play store or simply just sign up on web i want to give a little guidance on how to use this shows none of the following should be taken as an investment advice please see multiply.co/disclosures for more information my guest for today is siddharth bhaiya siddharth is the managing director and fund manager at equitas investment consulting private limited a boutique investment firm focusing primarily on pms and aif offerings he is a qualified chartered accountant and the driving force behind equitas investments and has over 20 years of experience into equity research and equity fund management with siddharth's multi bagger and contrarian stock picking approach equitas has delivered 31% cagr return over the last 9 years leading to about 1000% absolute returns he has been instrumental in taking equitas from a startup to a 250 million dollar aum with one of the best performance track record in the industry uh, with exposure across all market capitalization companies he is a specialist in bottoms up stock selection siddharth started his career as a research analyst with social finance and has worked with stratcap securities principal pnb amc and reliance capital asset management so without further ado please welcome siddharth bhaiya hey siddharth welcome to the show hi hi thank you so much you know so i want to start with something very interesting and you know i was going through your uh, twitter account and i found your twitter bio very interesting and let me read it out for our audience stocks 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 i breathe drink eat equities and i'm here not to take stock but to talk stocks i am the next multi bagger explain yourself siddharth okay lovely so i think uh, that only tells you one thing my confidence in my own abilities this was written 10 years back i haven't changed it till now wow so you're saying and 10 years back you wrote this and you have not changed that i have not changed my bio since 10 years 10 years back probably had 10 followers who were all my friends and who had no option but to follow me because i was following them <laughs> <laughs> and so yes but i had that belief way back in 2012 when we started equitas that we would do something really good i had no doubts about that like buffett said you know that i always knew i was going to become rich and when i started equitas i always knew that we were going to do really well okay it it's 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 not it's not arrogance it's not any of this thing but it is just the confidence that we have in our own abilities so yes it isn't something that i have written after i became successful this was written when nobody knew me okay awesome and when i started equitas i was fairly good at my work but i was somebody who had never interacted with anyone anyone who knew me knew that this this guy has a little bit of potential but not many people per se knew me so just to give you a brief background raj last i i became very active on my twitter also close to 2 years back before that i wasn't very active on my twitter as well right so the major part of the last two decades i've spent only on honing my skills a lot of people in the market spend a lot of time interacting with each other networking anything i say networking is bullshit if you are if you are skilled 
people will come and want to network with you so focus on building your skill sets okay awesome so help us understand about you know what were you doing before uh, what made you start equitas uh, tell us about your journey okay thanks uh, that's uh, raj so basically i completed my ca in 2001 right and i think that was one of the best thing that uh, that ever happened to me and uh, i wanted to get, get always wanted to get into the stock markets i had seen that during my article ship days i had seen the tech bubble i invested after all the tech stocks had crashed 90% and then i saw them crack another 70 80% after i had bought that's when i learned the definition of what a, uh, the definition of a stock which is uh, declined 90% it is a stock which is crashed 80% and then halved that's the definition of a stock which is <laughs> crashed 90% right yeah. so uh, tough times but uh, i realized somewhere i got this that this is my calling and the best way to do was Uh, to become a research analyst those were the days just after the dot com burst and just before 911 markets were very tough very difficult to get a job so as they show in the movies i actually took out 100 printouts of my resume and i went and gave it to every broking house i took the list from the nsc website and i went and approached each one of them luckily i got ca- calls from two of them one of them the one where where i joined was because they gave me 800 rupees more which took care of my first class pass <laughs> and that's that's how it started first day in office was 911 oh <laughs> but uh, and to a large extent over the last 20 years i've lived breathed equities i've read more than 500 books on uh, investing i've read practically met most of the managements that are worth investing in and yeah just focused on honing my skills but then i i worked on the sell side i was before starting equitas i was with reliance uh, capital asset which is now nippon asset management and uh, i was pretty disillusioned in with the manner in which the industry works 2011 12 i had certain personal reasons because of which i had to quit nippon and while they wanted me to come back i decided i wanted to do something on my own and i felt that this was the this was an industry for the wealth manager by the wealth manager of the wealth manager right the the fund ma- the fund management entity made money the wealth manager made money but the client seldom made money you had entry loads and exit loads and high fees and everything and we said we are going to do things differently so the first thing that we did we did a lot of things differently in equitas so we actually disrupted before the word disruption came into place one we did not uh, we said we are not going to work with distributors or financial intermediaries so whatever aum that we have been able to we close to 250 million dollars right now is only through word of mouth and references and in spite of all the wealth manager going and telling their clients that i have a better product than this because i'll get commissions over there <laughs> <laughs> so in 9 years of my journey i can tell you not a single distributor has gone and recommended a product to their clients okay so one is that second is we said we will do all our research in house so we do not rely on third party for any of our research and uh, while we uh, while we will read all the external research reports that are relevant to us but we don't rely on brokers for calls for buy so we built a very strong in house research process a very strong uh, in house research team and our process is also very unique a typical day in equitas we actually pay people to come to office and read newspapers <laughs> so uh, you have to read four newspapers a day financial newspapers we're not talking about bombay times and cine blitz <laughs> <laughs> and we go through a lot of raw primary data which is your announcements which is uh, your corporate announcements so we go through every single corporate announcement that is there till 4 or 5 months back we did not have anybody in business development and marketing right now we've uh, we growing we're getting a lot of inquiries things are getting a little out of hand and you know we we building a team over there as well now as as we grow so yeah in a lot of ways we backed it uh, with a very long term horizon and for us 
uh, Raj, even today, uh, of the nearly 75% of the money that we manage is actually profits that we have made for our clients. This industry is driven by AUM, whereas our goal is not AUM. Our goal is to generate returns for our clients. Awesome. That's what it is, right? That's that's the yeah. uh, that's the objective of my, if you if you were to give him your money to a money manager, what is your goal? Your goal is that he makes money for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. No, that's that's awesome. So I want to understand. You know, you were like ten years into your career uh, when you quit uh, Nippon. You said you never used distributors. Uh, how did you get your first check into the fund? Oh, very difficult. Very difficult. So we got. Uh, I, we started off with 10 clients and uh, 10 crores. And those 10 clients did not believe in stock markets at that point in time. You had inflation, which was running rampant. The rupee had gone from 53, 54, all the way to 70. And anytime you open Bloomberg or any of those things, you saw that old Fatawa rupee notes. <laughs> those are the images that they used to yep. depict India, right? Oil was at close to $100 plus at that point in time. And it was very difficult. But I spoke to 10 people. Uh, I spoke to a lot of people, actually. But there were 10 people who said, while we don't believe in the stock markets, I think this guy talks sense. And yes, that was the most difficult part of the journey to get those 10 clients. And today, our first client who started off with one crore, that single account is worth 60 crores. Wow. That's that's and more than seventy five percent of those are profits for him. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, that's 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 great to hear. Uh, you know, let's let's dwell around the whole psychology of money, and and I'm not talking about a book here, right? Actually, psychology of money because the people say, right? I mean, very true. We all have seen yeah. in our life, eighty percent of the market is all about psychology, right? Yes. Uh, it is. While everyone reads Munger, Buffett. You know, we all read that. We all tweet about it. We all write that. But, you know, how do people implement that? Yeah, so think, help us understand. Yeah. So that's the most difficult aspect. Implementation is the most difficult aspect. Okay. So first on psychology of money. Okay. So I keep on telling my clients that I am, forget your family, but besides your family, I'm the second most important person in your life. The most important person in your life is your doctor. Your health is your most important aspect. But when do you worry about health? I mean, you fall oh, oh, sick. Only, oh, oh, only, when, only when it goes out of whack. Of course. Yeah. The rest of the time, you're all worried about money. Yep. And you know a lot of people who even on their deathbeds are worried about their money only. <laughs> <laughs> right? So yeah. majority of our time, we spend worrying about money. And why do we worry about money? Okay, so money, uh, we part of the animal kingdom. I've shared this before, but I'll uh, just for the benefit of your audience. You know, before you start, I, I have a, I have a, my own theory, that theory, why we worry about money. We worry yeah. about money because we don't know how much is enough. No, oh, no. Okay, that's I, fine. Let me, yeah, I want to hear from yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll take you much more deeper than that. Sure. Okay, we're, we're part of the animal kingdom. And in the animal kingdom, an animal during his lifespan does only four things. Hunt for food, avoid being someone else's food, search for a mate, fourth is territory. That's the only four things that they do in their lifespan. Okay. And all our activities can be traced back to those four activities. And what is the source for all those activities for us? Money. Mm -hmm. Right. You want food, you need money. You want to not die, right? You need good health care. You need to live in a better country or a better society or a better this. You need money, mm -hmm. right? Your social stature this, uh, decides your mating opportunities, whom you marry, whom you, your spouse, right? So you need money. And territory, right? We all need to buy a house. We all need to buy land. That's the first primal instinct. So these are the primal instincts that I talk about. And the source to all of these is money. That is why money drives us insane. That is why money drives us crazy. So that's, I have not read Morgan Housel's book, but I think I can say in very briefly, this is the psychology of money. Okay. okay. 
And what was your second question, Raj? Sorry, I I didn't. Uh... No, I'm saying how you know we we all read about Buffett, Munger. How do we oh, yes. implement that? Right? Yeah, that's that's again a very very important question. Hmm. I've 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 been in the markets for twenty years. Okay, and I'll talk about three Indian investors who are extremely successful and we know of in their personal capacities. Okay, one is Radha Krishnan Damani, and I'll go not more there in their age order than rather than their uh, social uh, wealth or something. Second is the Inam Group, and third is Rakesh Junjunwala. And what is common to all three of these guys? The common thread to all three of these guys is that these guys still own shares, which they bought twenty years back through nine eleven, through global financial crisis. through covid uh, pandemic there are times they've seen multiple drawdowns of more than 50% probably during the global financial crisis they saw drawdowns of 80 70 to 90% and yet they held on to those shares so reading buffett reading munger reading peter lynch is the easiest part quoting them is the easiest part following them is the most difficult part how many people can withstand a 90% drop in one of their major holdings right and if you want to have your 100 baggers you want to have your 500 baggers this is what you will have to do in fact we wrote a very interesting uh, uh, blog on the 250 bagger story and probably we'll share it with you you uh, uh, it'll be very helpful for uh, the the readers Yeah, we'll 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 uh, share that in our show notes as well for sure. Yeah, so will be will be interesting to follow. So as you said, uh, people talk, people look at thirty year charts. They talk about thirty year charts, but when they actually build their portfolio, they don't even hold the uh, stocks for uh, one year. But you know, so again, coming back to, I just want to go a little bit deeper into this, and uh, uh, and before we we will also talk about multi bagger, but I want to understand this whole. Uh, you know the the capacity to hold stocks through such a big pain right i mean you know yeah. greed and fear are the biggest enemies of 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 human kind right i mean we all know that how does one get to that habit of how does one get comfortable with such drawdowns or 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 you saying that it, it's not for everyone how can one learn about it so one thing i'll say tell you equity market is a place raj where 99% of the people lose money and 1% of the people make money and 1% of the people make 99% of the money mm-hmm. 1% of the people make 90 so what do you need is a lot of lot of understanding of history right we 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 planning to come out with a block series on bubbles and we've gone through bubbles of the last 500 years and we're not even talking about tulip mania and south sea bubble everybody knows about it we're talking about something which is this and uh, when i was looking at these things like nfts and cryptos and a lot of these things and i just went and told my guys that look this is crazy but i have been telling this for more than a year now and while they agreed with me but then i said okay let's do let's do one thing let's go through all the bubbles over the last 500 years and a lot of these things are beyond the first 5 7 pages of google right our our research is now limited to the first page of google so we've done some real deep dive into it and you will realize what is happening with cryptos what is happening with nfts what is happening with startups has been happening for the last 400 500 years many people do not go back and read history if you read history you will realize when valuations are frothy what is happening in the tech space what is happening in the unlisted space is something that happened has consistently and repeatedly happened and i don't want to share a lot of details because we're going to be coming out with a block series but it's going to be fascinating it's going to be really really fascinating with the number of in fact i'll go on to say that raj more than 90% of the companies eventually delist most than 90% so your probability of making money is anyways 1 in 10 but at the same time as i said 99% of people behave in a foolish manner all the guys who are applying to ipos 
so it's you have to read history you have to go through it and yes you have to learn it over a period of time i'm sure even those guys uh, they made a lot of mistakes you have to make those mistakes even buffett made mistakes right when he started out he was a technical analyst <laughs> before he got into fundamental uh, investing yeah uh, let's spend some time on the multi baggers right you mentioned 75% of the the money in your uh, in your part of the au may actually profit right so uh, i mean effectively your your fund is forex in in whatever last 10 years and i was just looking at uh, data around no, 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 our fund has actually gone up 12x in the last uh, this so uh-huh. a lot of the capital came in only later came in on, late. right? okay 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 yeah so i was looking at the data around pedalite and uh, very fascinating to see that pedalite dropped 60% in 2008 from jan of 2008 to march of 2009 yes uh, but if anybody had held the stock even at the peak of jan of 2008 till now it yeah. has given 30% kagar return yes right Now, but you have to go through the pain of, and there are multiple times of twenty, twenty-five percent drawdown, right? Many times in the in the in in those last whatever twelve, thirteen, fourteen years. Now, how do how does one identify multi bagger first of all? Right. And how does one keep uh, believing and holding that same multi bagger over the years? Perfect. A very good question. Uh, and you bought the right company, Pedalite. I'll talk about Pedalite. I'll talk about Asian Paints. and i'll tell you why these stocks are not going to do well over the next decade mm-hmm. okay in 2008 we're just doing it in 2008 which were the most popular names in india jay prakash suzlon reliance power reliance infra suzlon uh, energy companies yeah steel companies tata steel right mm-hmm. people were buying those names show me one fund manager who was who in fact in 2005 when i was an analyst i went and recommended to my fund manager two fmcg stocks britannia and glaxo smith kline consumer and they were both available at 10 times trailing earnings they quoted 100 times earnings right now they were available at 10 times trailing earnings with net cash on the balance sheet luckily for him and for me he did not buy that sh- shares because over those next two years those shares did not do anything it was the jay prakash gvk lankos of the world which went through the roof right so multi bagger is a function of three things first and foremost let me be very 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 clear on this point the most important tenet of investing is value every time you go through history every time somebody has come and told you value is bullshit growth is the only thing you have an arc somewhere around the corner you have a kathy wood around the corner so first and foremost go through history you will realize stocks bottom out at record low valuations every single stock whether it is asian paints whether it is it is pedalite you look at their market don't look at the pe multiples at that point in time because crude was at 150 dollars and their earnings took a big whack you look at market cap to sales for pedalite and asian paints and you will realize they really really bottomed out at very low valuations so first and foremost is value every single time i can take you exon mobil was the most valuable company in the world in 2007 right ellen mittal was the richest person in the world in 2007 7 eight years later arshler mittal was a penny stock and exon mobil was nowhere people have been talking about tesla over the last one year tesla has flattish over the last one year exon mobil is up 55% so everything is cycle in the moment somebody comes and tells you this is a secular growth story it's probably at the peak of the cycle that people look at cyclical things and say these are asian paints is a cyclical stock if crude rises to 150 dollars their margins are going to get impacted 2008 asian paints had 8% ebitda margin when crude hit negative they had 26% ebitda margin what tells you that that margins cannot come back i'm sure 100% over a period of time that cycles last longer than what people's memories are so first and foremost value 
when did icici bank bottom at 120 odd rupees when the chanda kochar news came out at that point in time which have been the two best financial stocks over the last few years axis bank and icici bank and nobody is talking about them right so first and foremost as value the second pillar for finding a multi bagger is growth okay and remember one thing growth what is important is future growth historical growth has is already captured in the stock price century textiles was the growth stocks of the 1980s did it do well after that it didn't do well right so historical growth has no relevance what matters is future growth and future to a large extent is unpredictable future is also cyclical in my 20 years of investing raj all i can tell you is i have seen at bottom valuations companies get at bottom profitability companies get bottom pe multiples and at peak profitability companies get peak pe multiples and that's how you have 100 baggers in the stock markets and that is why you have 95% to 99% erosion in stock prices right which is which is an irony which normally you would think that as profit margins expand as this you would start to think that the pe multiples will decline it doesn't happen that way that's why exxon peaked in 2007 and tesla peaked in 2020 or 21 or or any of those uh, tech companies in the us right so growth but future growth is important you cannot ideally 100% predict future growth but you get a sense typically if you look at a growth cycle of an industry and these cycles last longer than anyone's memories these cycles last longer than 10 15 years nobody knows what, what transocean did or aban offshore did from 2001 to 2007 right those stocks went up crazy more than 1000x or something like that crazy numbers none of those guys because it's it's a lot of the current investors did not even exist over there yeah. and people who got caught in aban and transocean are no longer part of the stock market they are fixed deposit investors <laughs> right so so cycles last longer than people's memory and growth is cyclical so growth is important but if you diversify yourself across sectors i'm sure, and buy at a reasonable valuation you give yourself a very very good starting point the probability of you making multi baggers is very high and the third and most important thing is contrarian see contrarian is a very misunderstood word contrarian doesn't mean doing things or doing the opposite of others contrarian means doing things differently from others right which have been the two best performing stocks in the uh, nifty over the last couple of years Hindal Coin, Larsen and Tubro, and nobody is even talking about those stocks. Everybody is talking about ITC, so it's not a contrarian stock. <laughs> so we used to joke, you know. Uh, have you ever taken the Mumbai tra trains, Raj? I'm sure of you. Of course, have. of course, yeah, so, yeah, right. And your bull market peaks earlier. You know, you used to get in the local trains. The mm. local train me discussion बहुत ज़्यादा हो गया है. Uh -huh. on stock markets that means you know the market has peaked right the old yeah. timers will tell you that when you start today, getting ideas from the train from your train. fellow passengers so, so today twitter is the new local train <laughs> true <laughs> true very true yeah so if you start getting ideas on twitter you probably need to be uh, twitter you need to be scared <laughs> so so a combination of these three things will give you multi baggers and if you look at asian paints you look at pedal light the time to buy was 2008 2009 that was the time if, if there is anyone who's bought it at that point in time i want to speak to them and i want to ask them whether they are going to buy it at this point in time or not so at that point in time people wanted to buy indalco people wanted to buy jsw and a lot of the other names so i want to sorry i want to a little bit dwell deeper into the the contrarian part right because you yeah. said contrarian is not being opposite of others but uh, doing differently you know and i get that but can you use some examples to help understand when you you know pull everything together growth and value i can understand uh, this contrarian part can you help us understand with some example 
so i i I'll, I'll, i'll tell you right like a very classic this is you look at every multi bagger in the past okay you look at gold today nobody is talking about gold do you see anyone talking about gold you don't right everybody is talking about crypto and shorting people have an opinion either to buy crypto or to sell crypto hmm. but nobody has an opinion that forget i i don't care about the crypto hmm. yeah buying crypto is an opinion selling crypto is an opinion but not owning crypto is completely contrary hmm 2011 12 gold was super hot there were so many gold funds which were being launched in india and everybody wanted to invest in gold so contrariness contrariness how do i put it right i've just said something that is ignored neglected mm mm yep so basically nobody is talking about it and then nobody that's why it is getting reflected in both the value and the and lower expectation of the growth as well and more importantly likely it is contrary and because it hasn't done well for the last 10 years so people have forgotten mm. in 2007 lnd was the darling of the market from 2002 to 2007 the three most popular names in the country with institutions were larson abb and siemens those stocks rallied 50x within a matter of 5 to 6 years and over the last decade march 2020 all all those three names had delivered negative returns so from 2002 to 2007 larson went up 50x 50x yeah 2007 to 2020 larson's mm-hmm. revenue in absolute terms increased 500% the profitability increased 700% and the stock went down so I mean, what was it was absolute went down absolute yeah. went down okay so it was the exact opposite of the multi bagger in 2007 it was the most popular stock it was not contrarian it was extremely expensive at 50 60 times p multiple and it was a growth stock but mm. a growth the growth was historical mm. so while it has done well it has grown at 15% cagr over that period it's it did not qualify as a growth growth means 30 40 50 40 50% You look at Bajaj Finance, right? When it's I I I wrote a research report on Bajaj Auto Finance in two thousand four five. Wow, what is the market cap? It was a four p multiple. What is the market? Three hundred odd crores. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> it was available at four, and I use Peter Lynch analogy on savings and loans, and I said this is a wonderful buy. Okay. It was available at four p multiple. you should frame that research report nft nft <laughs> nft, NFT. <laughs> <laughs> you know let's come so let's come to the cycles because you spoke about cycles right and even growth is cycles which i i, I like that word growth is cycles right and you've been there in the market for two decades now uh, how does one detect and enter the cycle at you know reasonably right time um people are talking about metals right now people are talking about capex people are talking about china plus one specialty chemical probably is probably at the other end of the cycle now but how does one detect a, and 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 actually uh, look at any cycle so we can pick any example or whatever you know think like it's it's like uh, the alchemist everybody spent a lot of their times trying to convert everything into gold Mm. so trying to bottom fish is impossible in my 20 years in my 20 years i have not met anyone who's bought at the bottom and sold at the top or who's identified every single cycle and entered at the bottom and sold at the top it is said the smartest investors the richest investors i know of have held stocks through 50 70% drawdowns yep and that was a significant portion of their this so buy value something like an infosys was available at 10 times earnings 5 years back 4 years back when whole that infosys saga happened a lot of these tech companies were available at single digit pe multiple coforge you know scient persistent all of them were available at single digit pe multiple with net cash on their balance sheet and net cash of 30 40 50 percent on their balance sheet at that point in time i did not see anyone come on television and say tech looks good right so buy value 
you you and then wait okay so, nobody see uh, uh, and and, and uh, let's let's try and understand a little bit deeper also on that in terms of the cycles right i mean yeah, yeah. so uh, I'll, I'll i'll tell you what yeah, yeah. how typical cycle works how a typical cycle works a typical cycle works uh, like as soro said the manifestation of every bull market there is a very strong fundamental reason for it to start and then eventually it ends in a bubble so let's let's look at say any of the industries which have done well it starts with a genuine need there is a genuine vacuum companies start doing well then over a period of time as the company start doing well the stock starts doing well people get attracted to it to it then newer competition comes in and then at the peak the industry margins are so high that everybody wants to get into that business that is when you have excess capital which is what happened with the metal sector in 2007 the metal sector was doing well so well that everybody wanted to own a mine everybody wanted to set up a power plant in 2007 in india so i'll take you through the whole power sector and the energy thing to explain you the cycle okay 2002 to 2007 huge global demand for manufacturing products led by china and everything led to huge demand for energy okay so all energy went up right from crude oil to coal to lignite to everything went up 2007 there was a 2006 there was a power crisis governments were borrowing at 14 15 rupees typically before that if you wanted to set up a power plant you needed a ppa right but then 2007 everybody said why should we do a ppa if we can sell merchant power at 15 rupees why should we do a ppa so everybody set up merchant power plants all the banks financed also so genuine demand but at some point in time demand outpaced supply there was inflation there was super normal profit and everybody said this is a secular thing power demand to india mein aana hi aana hai for the next 20 years so crude went through the roof coal went through the roof domestically nobody wanted to sign ppas and banks were willing to fund merchant power plants and you had merchant power plants coming at debt equity ratio 1 is to 4 4 is to 1 rather okay now in the history of this it is probably one of the worst capital allocation mistakes that has ever been done because crude went through the roof because crude went from 18 to 150 dollars and coal went from Twenty dollars to whatever uh, price that it went to, you had a lot of investment which actually went into the renewable space. At one hundred and fifty dollars, it made a lot of sense to invest money into renewables, which was solar and wind. So, at one point in time, the smart money was investing into renewables, and the dumb money was going into power plants. then we all know what happened crude went down everything went down all of a sudden there was over supply as far as power is concerned and the world's focus shifted to and the cost of solar panels and wind and everything crashed 90% so all of a sudden you had solar which was more efficient than coal and uh, this it was one of that was a cycle right and i'm sure you can associate with that now reverse last 10 years what has happened there has been no investment in oil there has been no investment in coal there has been no investment in any basic materials the esg brigade has been so strong they talking about we want a world without oil really you cannot make you can, oil has got multiple downstream product uses you cannot manufacture aluminum without oil you need cpc you cannot manufacture steel without oil oil because you need graphite electrodes right packaging the entire packaging sector is linked to oil oil is a substitute for so many other products so forget that we can live in this world at least not for the in the way that we live uh, without oil so last 10 years no investments in oil so much so that oil companies are saying we don't want to invest in oil your your business is to invest in oil right <laughs> but so the esg brigade got to the, got to got to them 
And what is happening today? Demand for oil is back. During the COVID pandemic, all the weaker players. So the industry was already in a downturn for the last ten years, and in the COVID pandemic, the weaker players went out of the system. Demand rebounded, but supply is short, and that is what has happened with the shipping shipping industry. The shipping industry virtually collapsed after the two after two thousand and ten. So a lot of shipyards had closed down, and all of a sudden, demand for ships rebounded. Global trade. Increased dramatically, and today we are running short of ships, containers. So I think these are who could have predicted. And again, as I said, coming back to these two points, uh, I'm talking about growth. Who could have predicted the semiconductor crisis two years, three years back? Who could have predicted the shipping uh, container shortage two, three years back? I don't know of anyone who did that. Right. So all your risks are outliers. and if there is risk for someone it's profit for someone else yeah, yeah. so uh, again i want to uh, go you know more into this whole cycle thing uh, what are these sectors themes you think make sense now i mean you know i'm not saying they are bottom or not but generally at, at when you look at next few years 5 yeah. years 10 years whatever you know you look at what are the themes you or sectors or you know what part which part of the cycles are we in right now which right. makes sense for somebody to look at so as i said we are right we've been fairly bullish on metals and commodities over the last two years been very we very very bullish on manufacturing in india i think the china plus 1 is something which is happening see china is moving from a developing nation to a to a developed kind of a world right when do you start worrying about air quality and water quality and everything only when you have enough money in your pocket and china right now has enough money in, uh, in its pocket so they do they and if they want so you cannot have a manufacturing industry and worry about the air quality so manufacturing move from europe to us from us to japan from japan to china and now we are seeing it moving to other parts of the world including india <clears throat> so earlier india manufacturing india we were struggling with imports from china imports from china have gone away whether it is the tire industry right there's there's a small company that does bead wires okay it's not a recommendation because the stock has run up quite a bit it's expensive right now i met the management i said this is going to do well it it's a very small thing that you need in manufacturing of tires but the fact of the matter is though he's the only one left in the industry all his other competitors number 2 3 4 5 5 have all shut shop <coughs> and earlier there were a lot of imports from china so imports from china have gone away so what we are seeing with a lot of domestic companies is one they were suffering because of imports from china that has gone away one there is domestic demand and second there is a big vacuum for exports to europe and us so i think manufacturing will do extremely well infrastructure something which can do well because i think wage inflation is going to go through the roof and i've been saying this for the last 6 7 months now and uh, the government will have to create jobs and infrastructure is going to be a one of the modes for the government to create jobs so infrastructure as a sector might do well okay <clears throat> uh you know if, uh, last couple of weeks of course you have you've seen a big uh, uh, turmoil in the markets globally you know because of yeah. uh, renewed mm-hmm. uh people are talking about fed tightening in all aspect right i mean not just uh, shutting q qe or shutting down qe qt and rate hikes not just four maybe more and we are of course seeing the same impact in the market in india as well right so we've seen uh, sell off in small and mid caps how should one investor again bringing in the element of psychology of money here right how should one investor uh behave or do during this drawdowns so couple of things uh, one is uh, i think raj uh, a four four hikes by the fed are not going to crash the dow at 0% or at 1% you know cost of capital does not get really majorly impacted you understand one thing yep the, the bigger issue is there have been a lot of excesses in the market at 0% interest rates your cost of capital was zero so you could play pay infinite for anything mm-hmm. i think 20 years down the line people are going to look at nfts and cryptos and say how can people be so foolish 
like we look today and say how can people be so foolish that they apply to our par but then people were queuing up at that point in time right so one is i think overall you're going to see a sectoral change a sectoral rotation which has already happened inflation is going to be here you need a portfolio which is going to hedge you against inflation last one year tesla is up 4% exxon mobil is up 55% what did people buy over the last one year the dumb money bought tesla which is all the arc investors the smarter guys probably went and bought exxon mobil so sector rotation is happening we are seeing that right hindalco is up 500% tata steel is up 500% this is how bull bull market start right this is how when larson and tobro was a 50 bagger i'm sure it can be a 20 bagger that who knows mm. even then it was the it was a nifty company even then it was the largest infrastructure company in the country so the market per se will do well probably my sense is we might get a fed rate high and the market will probably start recovering from this but as far as the tech bubble is concerned i think it has burst it had burst long before the, the last week because the secondary stocks had already corrected 50 70% and i've been tweeting about the number of stock nasdaq stock setting 52 week lows for the last 2 3 months now second i think the crypto mania is over the private equity space people are going to be just left with paper after what has happened with zomato and paytm and everything in the world see the money that was buying private equity in the us was the money that was buying private equity into india was the money that was buying crypto was the the value investors like me were not buying any of these things right it was all a lot of new generation money who had never who have never seen a bear market before in the last 20 years we have not seen a bear market global financial crisis was just one year and three months and covid was just three months covid was just three months and you know this is i blame ben bananke for this i blame the fed for this you have to understand ben banga bananke studied only the great depression yeah and he realized that the solution to any bear market is money printing and because there was was no inflation for the last decade they said we can print as much as we want and now you are going to and then they printed crazily during covid you've seen money printing like never before and you want to see inflation like never before so not if you you just have to go and see the 30 years us bond yield chart it it makes for a scary reading from 17 18% it has gone all the way down to 0% steady decline people don't have memories i remember as a kid my dad took his first car loan at 18% and he was a very you know good salaried person and probably with a good credit score so 80s and 90s you had stocks available at 10% dividend yields few but you could do run a screener and get stocks at 10% dividend yields that was when interest rates were at 16-17% in in the late 90s and 2000s early 2000s or 2010 you could get stocks you could easily get stocks at 10 p multiple or majority of the stocks were at 10 p multiple right once in a while you would have those boom bust scenes 2020 people are talking about 10 times and 20 times price to sales <laughs> so from one end of the spectrum we've gone to the other end of the spectrum and humanity is longer than this 30 years we've been around for billions of years yeah right yeah. so you going to, people are going to be for a root shock some of this the younger generation is going to get a shock as bad as what people got during the great great depression and this is going to be about asset prices declining because these guys are going to keep on investing into cryptos all the way down till they go to zero they keep on averaging right yeah <laughs> so i'm sorry i'm just telling you the truth of the way i see no I no no i see see you're right and you know uh, uh, 
I mean, of course, there is a bubble everywhere, you know, bubble of uh, bubble of all whatever, you know, uh, bubble everywhere. Of bubble of all bubbles, right? Uh, I want to bring in another interesting thing that, you know, there were some brickbats thrown at you from a large Twitter account talking after your crash into March of 2020, probably you had a drawdown in your in your funds, right? But you, of yeah. course, bounced off back very well. What are your learnings? You know, what are your learnings in the last 10 years? I mean, you know, the only thing the I tell you done, is- so Raj, the only thing I'll tell you is in 2017, mm-hmm. we were busy sitting in our office. We, we never met anyone from the outside world. Okay. It means there was a time in 2017 when people said, we want to invest with you. And we said, look, we don't find any opportunities. Please go. When I have those clients who've come back again to us, mm. people used people used to say, I want to invest with you. I said, please come to my office because I'm the only one. I cannot come to meet you. I have to do my research. Okay. It wasn't me being arrogant. It was just that I had limited bandwidth and I, I was very happy with the set of clients, but I didn't realize it at that point in time that we were rock stars of the Indian market, that people were aping our portfolios behind our back. We delivered 55% CAGR at that point in time. We were really the rock stars. Our portfolios being, were being circulated, which is late. We came to later, uh, came to know later on. Mm-hmm. You know, he's actively, he's active in this and we were active in counters, which we were never active in also, but we didn't know at that. In 2020, at the bottom of the market, right? Everybody was down. Anybody who's a public manager, you could have screwed his happiness because the market. Very naturally. Yeah. 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 Market in one month was down 30%. Mm. Only So the only people who can take you down is somebody who doesn't have a public track record. (laughs) Right. Because he doesn't have anything. He's only <laughs> so I I compare managing money, public money to uh, to a beauty pageant, right? It takes guts to walk in a swimsuit in front of the world. In your in your own bathroom, everybody can do it. Mm. <laughs> so one is that. Second, as I said, and here we are in 2022. We are back again. We are much higher than what we were in 2017. 98% of our clients we've retained and we haven't sold a single stock. There is virtually zero churn in our portfolio from 2017 to 2022. 2017, people said, Isko fees dena hai? Iska client stock le lete hai, hai. Hmm. 2020, people said, all your stocks are kachara. Today they said, nahi, nahi, ab, now I get charts ki are your stock is on the verge of a breakout. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make uh, any difference to me, mm-hmm. right? You, you are in the public space. My track record is out there, open, susceptible to this. And I'm, I'm fine with it. I will do what is right for my clients. I'm not here. We took a lot of pressure. We stuck with our stocks and they're paying off handsomely. I don't know if many fund managers, small cap fund managers who survived 2020, they all moved to large caps. No, but let's talk about, uh, you know, we all make mistakes, right? In our life, right? I mean, in our career, everybody, we all go through those phases. So do you want to talk uh, uh, anything from your experience? Yeah, I think my biggest mistake has been selling stocks. Mm. I've done fairly well over the last 20 years. We have the best track record over the last nine years. I can tell you, Raj, the one thing is if I would have only, I invest every single month in the markets. Every single month I put money in our AIF right now. The one thing I can tell you is if, if, and only if I would have invested every single month and not sold a single stock at any point in time. I think I would have probably done slightly better than what I've done with a lot less, you know, tension. Mm. Simple. I I have bought stocks at 4P multiple, which have gone on to become 500 and thousand back. See, this is again, these are all learnings of life, right? And this is why Buffett is what he is because he learned a a lot of these lessons very early in his life. And he's right when he says that I started at 11 and I was probably a little late. So you, you go through these uh, things. So one of the things is probably, yes, I've got Havels at 4P multiple market cap, 160 crores. And I have research reports written on it because I was on the sell side at that point in time. 
Bajaj Finance at 4 PE multiple, right? I've looked at uh, Kotak Bank, Kotak when it was an NBFC. I was the first sell side guy to write a research report at that point in time. This was in 2004 or 2005. It's insane. 800, 900 crores market cap for Kotak. Probably even not that much. I don't remember. Mm. Right. So market, market, uh, and then forget all the mistakes that I would have done. And as a value investor, if you're buying at four and five P multiple, the probability of you making my, uh, the mistakes go down dramatically. Mm. Sure. We'll, we'll have a few duds here and there. Obviously everyone does right. Even Bradman, uh, got on, uh, got out on duck once in a while, even Buffett has lost stocks. So who are we? We are mere mortals. We will make mistakes and mistakes shouldn't bother us. We're let's in the about, business of going Yeah. Let's, let's talk about, you know, uh, IPO. And very clearly, you're not a big fan of IPO investing. And I've seen yeah. your tweets, right? Uh, and of course, you know, a lot of them have seen a good correction, probably down 50%, 60%, 70%. 70%. You, what are the trends you're seeing? Any, any uh, IPO which came last year you actually like? I don't do research on IPOs. Uh -huh. I, I don't oh, even they are listed stocks them. now, right? They are now listed stocks. So I'm saying, but I don't have to. Okay. See, the, the, Raj, the best part I can tell you is till the time the stocks don't fall into our filter screen of valuations, we don't even look at that. Hmm. I don't want to know what Zomato is doing. I don't want to know what uh, Supriya Life Sciences is doing or any of those companies are doing. I have finite capital. I can only buy 15 to 20 stocks. Why should I spend my time trying to research thousands of companies? Right. We have, we, as a team, we cover say 200 odd stocks. That's it. Mm. And if we want to look at the new stock, the first and foremost is it has to come within our valuation parameters. Forget any of the IPOs. I have 30 other stocks, which are available at single digit P multiple, which I cannot buy. I know these are going to do well, but I need to have the capital, right? Mm. Right. So one, as I said, we've done a lot of work as far as we did a clubhouse session as well on IPOs. I would recommend everyone go through it. We've actually looked at IPOs from 2004 and I must give, I have a great research team. They do a lot of work, a uh, lot of very good work. More than I think 60% or more than 90% of the IPOs have underperformed the Nifty since they came. Wow. Okay. Since 2004. Since 2004. Since 2004, and this is before uh, this was done three months back. So this is before the current carnage. Okay. Okay. Thirty percent of the stocks have delisted. Wow. So have sixteen companies in last eighteen years. So one percent of the IPO. IPOs have delisted or have become penny stocks. Wow. Have lost more than ninety percent, and I think sixty percent of the stocks have lost more than fifty percent in absolute terms. Since the listing, see IPO mein you don't get any allocation. So if you have to take it, you listing to hmm. Right. So I think if, if it, the odds are not stacked in my favor, why should I even bother with that? Hmm. I'm sure there, are, there is a DVS, there is a Maruti, there is a page industries, which is done well. But I, I don't know of anyone who's held on to these stocks from the IPO. And I don't know of anyone who's identified all the IPOs which have done well. In fact, the best IPO, okay, the best IPO since 2004 is Astral Poly. Okay. And it corrected 80% during the global financial crisis. Tell me anyone who would have held on to that stock after that 80% you know, correction. So the, so the odds are not stacked in your favor as far as IPOs is concerned. We have a, this in our office that um, do as the promoters do. Mm. If there's a buyback, if there's an insider trade, insider purchase, we'll buy the stock. We'll work on the company. If the mm. promoters are doing Q, QIP, OFS, IPO, we'll sell the stock first and ask questions later. <laughs> there's, only, there's only one and only one reason why promoter sells this stock. Because he feels he's getting very good value for it. Um, 
सोच के तो नहीं बेचेगा Let's talk about habits. You know, so what habit? You know, one habit you want to talk about which helped you in investing. Right. I think I was just discussing with one of my colleagues today, and I think forget teaching your kids about money. Forget teach teaching them about anything else. Mm. The most important thing that you need to teach your kids, or you need to teach yourself, is delayed gratification. True. i think my 20 year journey is all about delayed gratification people see the success but people don't see the sacrifices that we've made to reach where we've reached i was just discussing with my director uh, neera of my colleague and we haven't taken bonus in the last 3 years because we said look we need the capital right and the capital has grown fantastically in the company right we have more than quadrupled our net worth in the last 3 4 5 years uh, and we've we've made those sacrifices for the first 3 years but right when i started equitas i was at a fancy salary and for one year i did not take a salary i said the firm has to if i dr- start drawing so it's it's all about delayed gratification that is what multi baggers are about people talk about buffet buffet but Bif- buffet became 99% of his wealth he achieved after the age of 60 right True. but also remember even at the age of 60 he was bloody damn rich so <laughs> <laughs> you know people talk about buffet a lot and you know i i say only one thing he bought two stocks in the last a big big stake in two stocks and one is bank of america where i actually worked the other yeah. one is apple which was yeah. very public stock everybody damn you know iphone probably must be on on 5th or 6th or 7th i don't know which iphone was there when he bought the stock right yeah yeah he made maximum money in apple stock and he made a great amount of money in bank of america stock which was visible to anyone and everyone so it again again raj coming to the point of value apple as late as 2015 16 was available at 10 p multiple yeah. 10 times trailing pe multiple and people said this is a hardware company it should get only 10 pe multiple i don't know whether you know that yep yep and, and i think warren buffett microsoft, bought around the same time microsoft in 2002 3 or 4 i don't remember was available at 10 times earnings yep. microsoft 10 times trailing earnings i remember it because i went on one of the website and saw 10 times trailing earnings microsoft yep. at that point in time it every laptop in the world had a windows it was not a startup right infosys available at 10 times earnings asian paints available at 10 times earnings icici bank available at 10 times earnings when great companies offer you that hindalco a year back available at 0.1 time market cap to sales 0.1 times market cap to sales at any point in time you get companies like this at this valuation go and buy them at your chances of losing money are going to be very very less right yeah. let's let's talk so, about a stock which change your life any any one uh, stock or oh, there, there there are a few they all uh, happen to share a female name so <laughs> <laughs> okay interesting <laughs> <laughs> so is that I the name which got you interested or the stock got you interested just 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 happen to be let me let me put it this way i'm a ladies man <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. so couple couple of them uh, i think uh, one is bharti at mm-hmm. which was my first multi bagger and uh, avanti feeds which was our biggest multi bagger i think we made 180x returns for our clients on that so okay. 180 bag for us Bharti, why? I just had five hundred shares, uh, which eventually became thousand because of bonus. Instead of buying a mobile phone, which all my friends were buying, I went and bought Bharti stock. This is in two thousand and one, I think, or two thousand two. And I just bought ten uh, thousand w- rupees worth of Bharti, and it eventually became two lakh worth of Bharti or something like that. Okay. And I used to strut around in office as if I was Sunil Bharti Mittal. Yeah. Mm. with those 500 and 1000 shares but the whole point is it gave me the confidence to 
it gave me the ability right that that was the foundation and that was the stepping stone avanti right because we own 4% of the company and then the stock doubled and then the stock halved it came back below our purchase price and bsc put the stock in some auction window where it would trade in trade to trade only for 10 minutes during one hour so it, effectively the stock was illiquid you couldn't trade the stock imagine you own 4% of the company it was your biggest bet <laughs> and you couldn't trade the stock <laughs> and the markets were bad hmm. but because of my earlier experience of 10 years i knew that this is going to do well it was available at three times earnings net cash on the balance sheet good growth going forward but historically it is what time pe fati hui thi Mm-hmm. what time pay fatigue with you but what experience taught me is not to sell the stock the earlier me probably 4 5 years back would have sold it off at 225 rupees or 300 or 400 or 500 mm. and then we let the story ride then it became a popular name it became a growth company the valuations went through the roof and it became a popular name and uh, eventually we sold off and i haven't looked at the company since 2017 people come and ask me you're an avanti expert i said i sold it off why should i track it the day it comes back into my valuation range it will probably take us 8 to 10 days to do the research mm. so talking <laughs> like, about yeah talking about value and you know uh, you know one of the big sector uh, uh, which uh, and one of the big sector of banking within banking psu banks uh, have been hugely beaten down in the last whatever 10 odd years or not 10 maybe even 15 years probably they were beaten down but now we can see that you know they have cleaned up the balance sheet especially in you know, a banks like sbi of course even bank of baroda and and some more few yes. names and the profitability is also there it's gone up mm. how do you see them in your valuation metrics now broadly as a psu bank I'm i don't about. i don't look at psus mm. as a as see, a as a, capital, as a principal see my capital is finite mm. and the point of the matter is these are inefficient organizations mm. right if sale does well jsw is also going to do well tata steel is going to do well there's so many others who are going to do well right for years i heard people say concor is a great company concor is a great company abhi pata chala ki wo to lease rental hi nahi bharta government ko iske liye uska profit margin itna hai see these are inefficient organizations a sarkari company cannot have the same drive as a, this i'm sorry i'm not beating around the bush here and they will do well with market cycles they all do well these are this my capital is finite right bhcl did well but then so did siemens abb and larsen and tobro so why should i again it all boils down to your probability my focus is reduce the probability of you making losses i started my career as a banking analyst my first report was vijaya bank 17 17 18 years later the price was the same They might okay. have gone up, gone down, gone up. Okay. Right? There, there is. You saw what has happened in PTC financial services or anything recently. So there is no accountability as far as public sector undertakings are concerned. So I don't waste my time. Okay. That I, thing, I don't. They I might do well. Yeah, no, that's a good thing. I, I don't care. They might do well. I don't care. I am hmm. not AJC mutual fund. I am not. potential that i need to go and track every single stock because i have 2 lakh crore 3 lakh crore of equity aum they 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 might have a compulsion to buy i don't have a compulsion to buy mm. right so <laughs> that's it so i haven't even looked at state bank of india we don't okay. even research companies which we don't like mm. that makes sense time is also finite right capital yes, is finite yes, time is also yes. finite uh the capital gold. is finite time is finite yeah gold and yani you yes. mentioned a couple of times during this uh, uh, session as well and i think you tweeted today uh, 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 and you know that gold has to be part of your portfolio uh, life yes. is long any yani madman can could become pm or whatever to so buy gold for a rainy day uh, yes. help us understand your thesis on gold and you know what percentage of your assets could be in gold or uh, whatever you so want to talk about my- Yeah. So I made my first asset allocation in gold uh, a few days back, probably a couple of months back. I don't remember. I made my wife happy, uh, right? Is, uh, that's the first time she told me I love you. After that, 
सो एज फर्स्ट शी चेक हास में सब ठीक तो है ना यूर बाइंग गोल्ड मीन्स सब चंगा आई सेड या नो डोंट वरी सो दिंग द थिंग वॉट हैपन इज राज I was presenting at uh, the India Investing Conclave, and I was talking. I've been very this about you know the whole money printing and everything, and I think it leaves a lot of the population very poor. So I have my very strong views over there. And when we were doing that, we started doing a lot of work on gold as well. The history of gold. I, I've read a book. I've read a few books on the history of gold and everything. I made people in my office also read that book, and then we did a lot of research on gold. and when we actually put the numbers we realized that gold adjusted for tension or adjusted for anxiety has done better than any other asset class including equities hmm. 911 global financial crisis covid three of the most stressful periods of our life what was the only asset class that was up on those days gold i guess gold hmm. right so one gold has been has delivered fantastic results uh, over the last 30 40 years and when we talk about returns we're not talking about 3 years 5 years 10 years right as i said cycles last longer than other people's money uh, mm-hmm. what most people did 2011 12 is when gold peaked and then since then we've not seen any major returns as far as gold is concerned gold is gold is finite in the world gold is a lot of properties gold as an asset class has not done well for the last 10 years and a lot of when money printing happens gold automatically goes up you look at the money supply chart and gold price both move in tandem over a longer period of time 2 3 4 years here and there can always happen last 3 4 years the money which ought to have come into gold went into cryptos went into nfts went into private equity space now as people lose money over there they burn their fingers eventually the money is going to come back to fixed deposits is going to come back to gold so gold is a very very safe asset class to own don't listen to anyone don't listen to me it ought to ha- it ought to be a part of uh, this i recommend that everybody uh, listen to that to that podcast or to that uh, presentation that we made at the iic what is the uh, w- w- what kind of uh, uh, allocation uh, you are looking to for you know putting in the gold or or in what do you recommend right now right now it is very minuscule see again as i said for me i understand what i do mm-hmm. i i can be in the equity markets i know inflation is going to be there i know rupee is going to tank and i uh, rupee might not do well not tank but might not do well and yet i know my portfolio will do well right so i'm not just when i tweet i just don't talk about myself i'm not there to promote i'm just generally out there to educate people and i keep on saying i can always be wrong hmm yeah okay right so for me yes i might keep on increasing my and it doesn't make for me it doesn't matter anymore you have to understand one thing a lot of for right now we're not working from a personal perspective or any of those things beyond a point money is irrelevant money True. is only a barometer to judge how successful you are delayed gratification you see yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> one mistake in market you will always regret doing one mistake in the markets uh, there are too many too many we are in the business of making mistakes every every single transaction that you do is a is a mistake i think this is very important huh, raj every single transaction that you do in market is a mistake if you buy 1000 shares of reliance at 1000 okay after you are buying the stock and go to 998 or 999 that is a mistake because you could have bought lower you might get only 500 shares at 1000 and the stock might go to 1001 that's a mistake you might you could have bought 2000 shares but you bought only 1000 shares it's a mistake so i don't have any regrets as far as market is concerned i believe we are in the business of making uh, mistakes and 
there's so many opportunities that go by. I have identified so many multi baggers, but I couldn't invest and I don't regret because I cannot foretell the future. I did not know that SRF at 160 rupees, 3 PE multiple was going to be 100 bagger. But I knew at that point in time it was value, it was written in bold, SRF looks good, but paisa nahi tha. you cannot mm. buy every everything that moves, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, what, what, how do you how do you look at concentrated bets, right? There, are, I mean, you know, George Soros and, and Stan Druckenmiller, they've been very, uh, you know, the whole pound thing where they went after and they said, you know, the, uh, they actually bet the whole house on it because their conviction was so high. Uh, and right. maximum alpha is being made when you actually conviction is high and you actually put concentrated bet while diversification right. is great as a discipline for, for long-term investing. But maximum alpha is created only when you make concentrated. What do you think of that? And how do you, uh, how, how one should look at concentrated? Right? So I think uh, Raj, I'm not as intelligent as Buffett or Soros or Druckenmiller or any of those guys. I'll be very honest with you. Right. Uh, and my philosophy is when I build a portfolio, 16 stocks, 6% each, 96% okay. taken care of 4% may I use my intelligence and might probably allocate one, one percent each. So, and I'll tell you the most important thing in stock market is knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know. I don't know which one of my stocks is going to become a multi bagger. If I knew it, I had a fund manager who told me a long time back that if I, only I knew where the Nifty was going to go tomorrow, I would bet the whole world on it and retire to Bahamas the next day. Right? So I, I know based on my philosophy, on my process, on my 20 year this, that out of 16 stocks, I'll probably have 10 to 12 stocks, which will become multi-bagger, four stocks, which will perform in line with the markets and two stocks where I'll probably lose money for clients. That's, and I'm, I'm okay with that. And I really don't know if I knew that I was going to lose money on a stock, why would I buy it in the first place? And do you right. let your win, do you let your winner run or like suppose a big yes, stock becomes 20, 30 percent? Yes, that's the most important thing. That is the most important thing. Buffett didn't buy 40 percent of his liquid investments in Apple. He probably bought only six seven percent. Yeah, it became 40 percent and he let it let his winners run. Right. You look at Rakesh Junjunwala. He did not buy that much of Titan. He's just let Titan run through it uh, through his this. That's the most difficult part. Right. The Inam group has been holding MRF for donkey's years now. And they've probably been holding it since IPO at 10 rupees. I don't know what uh, this, but then they've seen so many multiple drawdowns, right? On that. So letting your winners ride is the most important thing. You get a good company, well run company, well run management, don't sell it. Eventually it'll do well. True, true. Uh, any book you will suggest for our investors to read? Oh, we had a, on our website, we had so many books. Uh, we had a whole host of books. I think one book, which I recommend to everyone is one of on Wall Street by Peter Lynch. I think that's the most sensible, commonsensical book on investing. You ought to read it, read, reread it. Some of my best bets have come because of, because of that. So I think that's, that's the one book again, as you said. We'll probably try and put up a list of books on our website. Earlier, we had a complete big, nice list of books. There are so okay. many books to read. Okay. Uh, we are coming towards the end of our conversation. And this is one question we ask, uh, you know, all our guests. What is one advice you will give to your 20-year-old self? Uh, I think I've done fairly well. So I wouldn't change. I won't want to, I wouldn't want to change anything. With all my mistakes, I am what I am of all the mistakes that I committed, right? The one thing that people want to change is the mistakes that they did. But what most people don't realize it is your mistakes that made you what you are. Mm, true. Right? If I wouldn't have missed on a few multi-baggers, I wouldn't have had Avanti. So why should I change that? <laughs> so I, I, I really, I don't want to change anything. <laughs> But, but any advice you would want to give to say a 20 year old yes. guy right so, now? So, so, so uh, one thing I'd say is focus on two things. One is your mental health and second is your physical health. That's what I tell my daughters. Be physically fit. Second, be mentally fit. To be mentally fit, you need to read a lot. 
so spend a lot of your time reading that's a reading is a fantastic tool because it's a one way communication between the author to you either you accept what the author says you don't have time to argue with him you can't argue with him yeah at most you can you can reply, go and reply on his website but uh, you take what you like and you ignore what you uh, don't uh, like so yeah those are the two and, two pieces of advice for the 20 year olds yeah and, and what don't invest in crypto <laughs> uh what future lies for yourself and uh, for for equitas okay yeah i think so we uh, we spent the last 9 years uh, building our track record you know within one year we complete 10 uh, 10 years 10 year we currently at 30% 32% cagr returns hopefully we'll if we end with that, those kind of numbers we'll be the best performing in the country over that period by a country mind right uh, we set up uh, we have two products domestically pms and aif we are launching our offshore fund this is going to be a flagship offshore fund out of difc so it will probably create a platform for non residents to invest into india and we want to create a similar investing experience for people second a big thing for equitas is we have a very young team and this is a platform for people to fulfill their life ambitions to fulfill their career career ambitions so that's that's what we want we want to build a great organization and i can't do it alone i have a great team and i'm very very thankful to them i wouldn't be here without them so yeah that's 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 about it we want to build a great financial organization now that's awesome on that great note uh, you know we come to end of our conversation so thank you so much siddharth and you know thanks, thanks, i really Raj. i really enjoyed the whole conversation Thank you thanks a lot thanks for having me over and all the best to you thank yeah. you